Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So, before we do anything else today, we have two glitches we need to fix. The first one is quite simple. You can pair a card with itself by clicking on it twice. Now, we don't want we don't want that. That's definitely not something we want to be able to happen. The other glitch is to do with when the um, list is well, when, when the cards are still being laid. Did you just see how there we clicked on it and it was a watermelon and then it changed to a banana? It's because when you hit go, you can select cards and they're still working off of the previous um, list. It hasn't yet built a new randomized list. Um, so first we're gonna fix the pair with itself um, glitch and that's nice and easy. What you need to do is make sure that you've got your card sprite selected and look for when this sprite clicked. We're going to go to control, we're going to get out an if then statement and we're going to put this if then right underneath when this sprite clicked so that the, it encapsulates everything that's underneath it. Now what we're going to do is every time we flip open, flip over a card, we want to make sure that um, if the card is not blank then it will not try and match so if we go to operators and look for an equals operator the green category operators about eight from the top pull out an equals and slot that in between the if and the then just here and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to looks the purple category on the left we're going to look down until you find this costume number, rounded sort of variable looking thing. Drag that out and put it into the first slot of our equals operator. Now you can put this as the number or the name. I'm just gonna leave it at the number. And then what you need to do is look in your costumes and make sure that the top one, your blank one, is number one. And then we're going to go if costume number equals one. So now that means that all of this code will only happen if the sprite that we clicked on is blank. So now when we try and click on this cherry that's been turned over, turned over or apple, I'm not sure which it is, it won't click, but we can try and pair it with another card. So that's good. That fixes one of the little, one of the little glitches. Um, the other thing that we're going to do is we are going to need to fix that problem where we can start selecting cards before the cards have been properly um, arranged and the list has been properly made. Um, so what we're going to do is look for when green flag clicked and look for where you've got set player control to yes. We're actually gonna click on that yes and type in no so the player cannot when the game starts, start clicking on anything. And then what we need to do is once we've finished all of the code of setting up our cards and setting up our board and setting up our list, then we can turn the player control back on. So underneath when green flag clicked, we've set our player control to no, and then all the way at the bottom, we've got create cards and create list. And after that, we want to go to variables, the dark orange category, pull out set variable we're going to set our player control to yes make sure you spell this correctly make sure you spell it the same way you've spelled it everywhere else in your code so now when we hit go we can't start flipping cards until the list has been finished the cards have been set up and the game is ready okay perfect Two glitches fixed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a cool little line of hearts at the top of the screen that are gonna represent the lives that we have left. And every time we get a guess, whenever, every time we try and make a pair that's wrong, it's going to take away one of those lives. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna to need to make a variable called lives. So make sure that you're in the dark orange category, variables, top left corner, click on make a variable and call it lives. Okay, then 
have a look in your code for when this sprite clicked. Now we've got a bunch of stuff in here. So what you need to find in here is broadcast incorrect. Look for that, broadcast incorrect. And right above it, we need to put in a change variable. So put that in right above broadcast incorrect. And the variable that we're changing is lives by minus one. So now every time we get a card, when every time we make a uh, try to flip two cards and they don't match, we're going to lose a life. Now we could just have this number at the top. Um, we could set a certain amount of lives and just have this number show. But we're going to do something kind of cool, and this is going to be useful in any game that you want to use it in. So we're going to make a little heart meter. So if you, just like Minecraft, the way that Minecraft looks. So we're going to go to um, the bottom right corner, click on choose a sprite, type in heart, select this heart here, then go to the top left corner and click on costumes. Now I want you to click on the heart purple and delete that. We are going to make a heart that is full and red and a heart that is empty and black. So we're going to rename this heart red. Oh, let's just name it to red. It's nice and short and easy. Um, and then I'm going to change this a little bit. You can actually design your hearts to look any way you like. I'm going to change the outline to be black and I'm going to change the fill. I'm going to, when you click on the fill color here, just like we did with our cards, you can select one of these effects and then I'm going to select, select this effect. I'm going to set, make that a slightly darker version of red. I quite like how that looks. That looks good. I like that. Now what we're going to do, once you've got your heart the way you like it, right click on the costume and duplicate the costume. Rename this costume to black. I'm going to change the inside to be a very dark grey. That looks good. I'm happy with that. We've got our red heart and our black heart. Awesome, perfect. Okay, so we're going to go to the code and we're going to make some code for our, our, new, our new little heart meter. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have a line of these going along the top of the screen. They're going to be small and um, as we lose lives, the red hearts are going to turn into black hearts. Um, so first of all, let's start off with making sure that it looks good. So we're going to go to um, events, the yellow category, pull out a when green flag clicked. We're going to go to um, get a repeat 10 out of control, the orange category. And then we're going to go to motion, the dark blue category. And we're going to get out, go to X, and then a number, Y, and then a number. Drag that out and put it underneath when green flag clicked. We're going to send this up to the top left corner. Now the coordinates that I like, and you can change these coordinates a little bit if you like, but the ones that I like are minus 210 and 160. Now this heart is too big, we need to make it smaller. So we're going to go to looks, the purple category, we're going to get out set size to 100%. I'm going to put that right here. Click on that um, 100 and type in 20%. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to control the orange category. We're going to get out a create clone of myself. Put that inside the repeat 10 and then go to motion, the dark blue category, and we're going to get out a change X by, and then we're going to make that change X by 30. Okay, so let's just hit go. All right, that looks pretty good. We've got our little line of hearts there. Now they're in the way of the cards, so what we're going to do is we're going to make all of our cards move down a little bit. 
Um, so we're going to go to our cards, our card sprite, and look for define create cards. Now let's change some of these. So all we want to change are the Y value. So look underneath define create cards, go to X is fine, leave that as it is, but look at Y. Let's make this a bit lower, shall we? So go to, click on where it says 130 and type in 105, let's say 105. And also the gaps between the cards is um, changed by um, this change Y by minus 85 at the bottom. Do you see that here? I'm gonna zoom in on that. Click on that change Y by minus 85 and let's change that to by minus 80. All right, let's hit go. Well, that seems pretty good. Now we're gonna have these hearts go all the way across to the end once we're done. So I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our heart sprite. We're gonna put some more code in here. So we've got our lives sprite. That dictates how many lives we have. So let's go to um, variables, the orange category. Make sure that you're in the heart sprite and look for when green flag clicked and then get out a set variable. We're gonna set the lives variable to what? To 15. Yeah, that looks good. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to do something very similar to what we did with the cards. Do you remember how with the cards we had a variable to count our cards as we made them? And then we had a variable uh, that was individual to each of the cards, that was an ID number that was unique to it. We're going to do the exact same thing, um, and you're going to see why a bit later. So we're going to get out a, we're going to click on make a variable, we're going to call our first variable heart counter and we're going to make sure that for all sprites is, is selected here this needs to be a global variable we're going to get out set heart counter to zero that's good and then we're going to get um, we're going to click on make a variable in the top left corner and this time we're going to select for this sprite only we're going to call this heart ID. Remember, ID stands for identification, and it's going to be a, a number that is unique to each of our cards. Okay, that seems good. Um, so now what we're going to do is we are going to look for our repeat 10, and look in the top left corner for all of our variables, and look for our lives variables. Drag that out, because this is how many times we want to make clones. We're going to repeat this lives many times. So if we have 15 lives, it's gonna make 15 hearts. That makes sense, doesn't it? Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to get out a change variable, put it right underneath repeat lives, click on that white triangle and change it to heart counter. Change heart counter by one. Same way as we did the cards. That all looks pretty good. Now, our original heart sprite, we're going to need to hide that one. Um, so go to the purple category, looks, get out a hide, and put that right underneath when green flag clicked. Okay, so far so good. So that's most of what we need here. Um, what we need to do now is we need to go to control and look for when I start as clone. Drag that out when I start as clone and go to looks and get a show. Now let's see if this works. If we hit go, we should have 15 hearts. That looks pretty neat. So if you want a different number of, um, you could, so you can change some of the things like you can change this number here, this change X by 30, if you want the hearts to be closer together so you can fit more hearts in. As it is, I've kept this nice and simple um, so that later on, if you want to change how many lives you have, uh, make the game easier or harder, you should be able to do that by just changing the set lives variable. 
and you can experiment on how easy or hard you want the game to be. Okay, so that all seems pretty good, but now we need a way of making these hearts um, change between being red hearts and black hearts. So we're going to put some code underneath our when I start as clone. So underneath the show, we're going to get we're going to go to variables, the dark orange category. We're going to get our set variable. We're going to set the heart ID. What are we going to set it to? We're going to grab our heart counter variable, and we're going to, that's what we're going to set the heart ID to. So as you can see with these variables, watch the heart counter variable. It counts up for how many hearts we have. And that means each of these hearts now has its own individual number. So what we're going to do now, and it goes in order as well, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 15. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put in a very simple bit of code that's going to turn these either red or black, depending on how many lives we have left. So we're going to go to um, control, we're going to get out an forever, and inside the forever, we're going to get an if then else. So we've got our forever if then else, we're going to get out an operator, so go to the green category operators, now we need a less than operator. That's the arrow that's pointing to the left, it's six from the top looks like seven from the top actually one two three four five six seven good 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 less than operator put that in between the if and the then now we're going to go to variables the dark orange category we're going to get out lives and put it in the first part of our less than operator and we're going to get out a heart id so if lives is less than heart ID. We're going to go to looks, the, uh, the purple category. We're going to get out switch costume to black and put that underneath the if and get a switch costume to red and put that underneath the else. So if our, when our lives are 15, all of them will be red. But when, it go, when our lives goes down to 14, this one here, this heart on the end, its heart ID is 15. It's the one on the end. And it will ask, wait a minute, is um, 14 lives left less than 15, which is my heart ID? Yes, it is. I'm going to turn off and turn, I'm going to, I'm going to switch my costume to the black costume. So let's see if it works. We're going to flip over a card here, flip over a card here. Got them wrong. Oh, let's try that again. We got that right. Hey, and you can see when we get one wrong, it empties out one of the hearts, it becomes black, and we are running out of lives. So this is a nice bit of code. Feel free to use this in any game you like. Um, Scratch already has a nice little inbuilt heart sprite that you can use. So yeah, absolutely. So we're not going to code yet what happens when we run out of lives. So for now, the game is still unlosable. But this is going to be useful for the future when we put in a win condition and a lose condition. So I hope you had fun. We've got those two glitches fixed. If you find any other glitches in the game, let me know in the comments so we can fix those. Fixing glitches is part of game development and part of coding. That's always, there's always new bugs to fix. Um, so you can always subscribe, ring the bell so that you can see all the future um, episodes. Uh, leave me some comments if there are some games you would like me to make in the future. I've already got a few really good ideas from people who've left me comments in the past. I really appreciate that. Um, but stay awesome. Be cool to each other and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.